Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Dr. Anna Kabeca, and she's actually known as the girlfriend doctor. She's actually a triple board certified doctor. She's a trained OBGYN. And she's going to be talking today about her personal experience. And we're going to be talking about keto. We're going to be talking about hormones. We're talking about premenopause and menopause and so much more. So Dr. Anna Kabeca, welcome. Oh my gosh, it's great to be here with you. I love our time together, Chantel. Thanks for having me. Yes. All right, so let's. we're getting so many questions and I'll dive into those in just a bit. But I want you to talk a little bit about what you feel is kind of the best plan for someone who's going into pre... Talk about what happens with, with people when they go into premenopause and menopause and some of the things that can really help them. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's because our hormones are changing, not just our reproductive hormones, but they're actually 13 weight control hormones. And because of these natural changes, like puberty is natural, so is menopause, right? And the thing is, this period of hormonal change is actually 35 to 55 and beyond. So it can be starting really early. So the quicker we understand what's happening and shift our physiology, to be empowered through nutrition, lifestyle, that really makes a difference. And so what I found in working through my own personal messes and journey and, um, and you know, tens of thousands of my clients is that what I call the keto green way or keto alkaline way of, of eating and, and living. And this is with, of course, intermittent fasting, minimum 13 to 16 hours between dinner and breakfast, no more snacking, cut out the sugars, the artificial sweet sweeteners, the sweet drinks, all of those things have to go and really focus on the low carb alkalinizing plant foods that are really designed to help with hormone balance, detoxification. And that's often missed, especially when we're doing a a keto type of plan. But um, that's really essential for empowering our metabolism. So you have a really great best selling, you've got two best selling books, you've got the um, hormone fix, and then your other one is, is it? 16. Say that one again. Keto green 16. Keto green 16, yes. Um, yeah. So as far as, let's talk a little bit about the process of the brain using glucose for fuel is a very estrogen dependent process. Yeah. Because I, I want to talk to people about how, when they can truly get sugar out of their diet, how that affects their estrogen levels. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely what's happening, you know, as our hormones are shifting, as we're aging, our progesterone starts to decline in our mid to late thirties. And so that's just with natural ovarian function, you know, decline of ovarian function. And um, it happens to all of us. Right. And so our ovaries are responsible for a major amount of our progesterone and also our DHEA. Both are precursors to estrogen and testosterone hormones that are definitely you hear a lot about, right? Reproductive hormones, but they are getting considerably minor compared to progesterone and DHEA. Well, when progesterone is this hormone of neuroprotection. So what happens during this time as our hormones are shifting, women often come in, like come into my office with mood swings, PMS, irritability. You know, the gynecologic symptoms can come in too, heavier than normal periods, breakthrough bleeding, um, irregular cycles, you know, painful um, breast cysts or ovarian cysts, fibroids become symptomatic. All of these symptoms are gynecologic, but at the same time, there are neurologic symptoms. So that anxiety, that insomnia, that irritability, the mood swings, all of that's coming in. And that's that's a function of this decline in our, our reproductive hormones, our, our major neuroprotective hormone, progesterone, and with that estrogen. And as you said, Chantel, yes, estrogen um, is critical for gluconeogenesis in the brain. So as we start to get these dips, our brains are actually starving. And I experienced that myself. I did not study this, right? I have come to figure this out because I had to understand why when I was 48, and I'm almost 55 now, but why when I was 48, I started to have exactly every single one of those symptoms I just described to you you know, brain fog, memory loss. I I was struggling with that. I certainly felt like I was living in a very, you know, stormy cloud. 
and irritability mood swings. And as a, you know, as a single mom to teenage girls, you know, that is not a really good, you know, really good environment to have in the house. So, and I needed to understand why. And, um, and that took me on this journey in really balancing and shifting from using glucose as a primary brain source to using ketones. And, and it came honestly, this dis- uh, this discovery process, and I, I do write about it in my books a little bit, but it's really fascinating. So this discovery process came about, yes, I had the brain fog. Yes, I had the memory loss, anxiety, PMS, but that weight gain overnight, like gaining 20 pounds without doing anything different, that was terrifying. And I thought for sure I'll be 300 pounds before I, you know, this stops because where is this coming from? Because I literally anything different. And that took me to really restrict carbs like I do for my candida patients or my uh, neurologic patients going into a more ketogenic diet, but I didn't feel good. And so that's when I just started like, okay, well, why aren't I feeling good? Why am I feeling irritable? Why is this all, all this research done on men and what happens with us in perimenopause, menopause and what's happening here? So that led me to my whole alkaline discovery that I recognized when I checked my urine pH, I was as acidic as the pH paper read. You know, it was stress, it was a very acidic keto diet, and that led me to feel inflamed. Even though I've got the ketos going, I still wasn't balanced. And that helped me add in this alkalinizing factor. So I started using the microgreens and the kale, the beet greens, the you know, Swiss chard and broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, all of these crucifers also to help with hormonal detox. Okay, we've got to really empower our system and decrease inflammation and help with um, estrogen metabolism. So that was all in this process of discovering. And not only did I lose those 20 pounds very quickly, but I had this brain clarity. Like I could, I felt like the cloud has lifted as so many of my patients have said the cloud has lifted. And it wasn't until a while later that I came across the research showing that that glucose utilization in the brain is estrogen dependent, but keto, you know, uh, using ketones for fuel in the brain is not hormonally dependent. So that was another huge aha understanding what, you know, what was manifesting at that time. So I will say glucose is to gasoline as ketones are to jet fuel but in an alkaline environment with making sure we're getting those, those microgreens on board. Mm. All right. Well, let's jump into some questions. This first one's from Jenilyn in Hope Springs. I love your podcast and I listen to an episode with a guest talking about taking progesterone cream. I am 49 years old and I bought some and I did take some. And sometimes when I take it, it makes me eat less. And then sometimes I take it when it's, when I take it, I'm more hungry. I just bought some progesterone cream from Amazon and I felt like I was less hungry, but then I got some real progesterone cream from a doctor from a real compound pharmacy. And then I felt like I was more hungry. I went to the doctor and he said, I needed to take my blood. I think on day 21 to get the best test results. Can you help with this? Oh my gosh, this is a great, great question. I want to thank our our writer for bringing this up. And the, there's so much more that, that I would ask as a, as a clinician. Remember that I cannot give medical advice here, but I can dig deeper and help you kind of understand what's going on. It really does depend on the kind of progesterone. Was it an oral progesterone that you got from the compounding pharmacy or a cream? So Sounds since like a cream. Yeah. Just like a cream. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, cause, and we can look at it both ways. Oral progesterone, you know, 90% we get metabolites into allopregnenolone and other derivatives of progesterone that can make us sleepier. So when I need a patient to get a good night's sleep, whether it's for postpartum depression, whether it's for, you know, insomnia and just this time period of, um, you know, perimenopause or menopause, I will give them oral progesterone, 100 or 200 milligrams at bedtime, typically 200 milligrams at bedtime, depending on their cycle, usually a few days off a month. Now, progesterone cream, we have to look at the dosage. Now, there's a few time, a few reasons why um, some progesterone creams won't work. And I know this because I've investigated so many progesterone creams and I finally created my own, which is my Pure Balance PPR cream. And so we want to look at, number one, if... if um, 
always have to understand the source. So I would say ideal, it's going to a compounding pharmacy. Why is it making you hungry? It really may depend on the dosage that you're getting. Typically, a 20 milligram transdermal progesterone is equivalent to a 200 milligrams oral progesterone. So sometimes you may be getting 40, 60, or 100 milligrams in a transdermal, and that's just going to be too much. And that can definitely um, cause a, a more of a progesterone dominant. It can cause some weight gain. It can cause some, um, it re- you know, can even affect irregular cycles. So we want to be careful we're not doing too much progesterone. And then on the flip side, if we're not getting the absorption from the cream, often we have to dig into the digestion. Because I always say, if you don't have healthy skin as a reflection of a healthy gut. So my clients that didn't do well with a topical usually had you know, SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, had digestive issues, IBS, uh, celiac disease. So we had to do something different, either ideally going to a vaginal absorption because the vagina has so much good vascular um, absorption. It is really an ideal way to kind of bypass issues with otherwise transdermal absorption. So yeah, a lot, a lot into that question. All right, this next one is from Sally from Houston, Texas. I did a 30-day keto diet and lost no weight. I felt great, but one thing is that I was eating a massive amount of fats and probably a little bit more because I felt deprived from not eating as many carbs. I did add a ton of dairy, which I don't normally eat a lot of dairy, so could that be it? Then I did a three-day juice fast and then lost three pounds right away but the juices did have natural fruits in it, which has sugar. Thoughts? Oh yeah, for sure. There's a food sensitivity in there somewhere and dairy is a big food sensitivity. I mean, I can be, um, and that's something really important to realize. So in my keto green plans, there is no dairy, no grains, because, you know, we really want to eliminate the high allergen foods. And so we just avoid them altogether. Um, so I uh, omit them all together. Plus if I, there's a little dairy, like maybe a, a teaspoon of Parmesan in something, I'll be three pounds heavier the next day. So I get this food sensitivity experience really firsthand. So it could be a food sensitivity. The second thing is like, I would have her, you know, and recommend, you know, have a keto calculator that looks at how, what does a keto, what does a keto green diet look like in a day for you? And so I'll give you that link, Chantel. I mean, it is um, dranna.com forward slash keto calc, K-E-T-O-C-A-L-C. And everyone can take that keto calculator and just look at what a day in the life of being keto green looks like based on your height. It's only for women. Men are different. So this is designed for women. It's based on your height, your activity level, and whether you want to lose weight. So I think then then you can kind of get a, a perspective, a visual perspective of what a healthy keto green plan looks like for you. And often, yeah, too much, too much fat or too much protein. That can be another reason. And a food sensitivity will block your success. Okay. This next one, um, this next question, but before I do that, I want you to talk about a little bit about your lifestyle. So let, let's give like a day in the life of what you kind of, what does a day in the life look like for you as far as your eating, your exercise, and what do you do? Oh my gosh. Well, let me tell you, it's been a little bit chaotic since quarantine and we've moved to Texas and there's been a lot of, my youngest is in the rodeo. So we're doing a lot of on the road stuff, which has really been a challenge kicking my butt. Let me tell you. So in my healthy routine, like for example, yesterday, my day went like this. 6.30, I'm up. I I do my meditation before I get out of bed and I'm up, have a hot cup of tea and a shot of my Mighty Maca Plus with a little bit of apple cider vinegar to help my body detox and alkalinize right away. Then 7.30 to 8.30 is my workout. And then I do my writing production. And then I break fast, usually with a keto green shake, somewhere between 10 and 11 a.m. And I may or may not eat again until last night, for example, ate dinner at 6 p.m. And it was guacamole and some uh, chicken and a side of other vegetables. So healthy fats, lots of greens and um, good quality protein. 
And that makes, that's kind of a cute for me Two two meals a day is really ideal, but I have to break fast by six, um, by 10 to 11 and definitely try to eat by 6 PM. And that's it. And hydrate in between my meals, not with my meals. And then bedtime, you know, after, after dinner, try to drink very little. So my digestion will be complete. I don't want to dilute my digestive juices, nor do I want to get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. So um, after dinner, I drink very little, but usually like a hot tea or maybe um, um, another, you know, type of usually a warm drink or a glass of water. Yeah. Okay, this next one is from Meredith in Ohio. She says, how do I do keto without not eating grain or dairy? Almost every keto recipe out there seems to have tons of cheese and tons of dairy in it. I'm not losing the last 15 pounds that I want, and I'm always craving fruit. And I'm not so sure that not eating fruit is a good idea, especially with COVID. I feel like you really need some of those great nutrients from fruit. I also remember you talking a little bit about keto flex, like kind of keto. Do you think that I should try that? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, we want to look at your food sensitivity. So knowing food sensitivities is key. You do that with a modified elimination diet and gradually introduce food back. So all all my plans are grain-free, dairy-free. So I would just say, you know, definitely check out Keto Green 16 and look at that. And there's great visuals in there to what um, a healthy keto plan looks like. And I, I like a feast day. So let your feast day have some healthy fruit. So maybe there's like, even just like for that compliance, listening to your body, this times of stress, maybe it's Saturdays, you, you'll you have some sweet potato, you'll have some blueberries, you'll have strawberries, you'll have some high, you know, some fruits, and you can use a little bit of these fruits too, these lower glass fruits on a regular basis. In Keto Green 16, we use a little bit of pineapple and a little bit of mango because those are digestive fruits. The enzymes in them are very good for digestion. And that can help. And that can also, using it in the evening, help you create more tryptophan and get a better night's sleep. And so there's kind of like, there's a method to the madness in this based on our, our physiology, especially as our hormones are changing. And I think that that um, looking, looking at those things, um, in general, dairy is um, a little bit goes a long way. And uh, a lot of our dairy in our... Um, country in America is uh, quite high in antibiotics and um, endocrine disruptors. And we really don't want to introduce any other hormones into our body as much as possible. And I think dairy is a really big culprit there as well as it's one of the number one food sensitivities. So I really do recommend eliminating that. And if you don't have an issue, like a little bit of cheese, feta cheese, or goat cheese, uh, periodic fermented cheeses on a periodic basis, that's that's okay to incorporate in, but you don't have to have dairy to be keto. All right, this next one is from Jamie Sue. She says, I am in perimenopause and I feel like I've gained 10 pounds and I'm doing nothing different than I was before. I literally eat the same thing in every day and every week. I'm now 44 years old and I have no food sensitivities. I was eating in a six hour eating window. Then I brought it down to four hours and still I'm not making a difference. Any thoughts? Yeah, for me, um, I do better with a six to eight hour eating window than I do. So, so a lot of times in my next book, we'll be writing about changing some things up. It's called Menu Pause. <laughs> So uh, a spinoff, uh, still with keto green concepts, but a little spinoff. We'll have some carb up days and things like that. But one of the things is that we really want to kind of look and see, like, what if we just had dinner for breakfast for, you know, what if we ate our big meal in the middle of the day and just had a smoothie in the evening? Sometimes shifting that even for a week can be enough to kickstart your metabolism, change things up and, and support your, support your body. So often when I hear, okay, I'm in this plateau, I'm like, well, what about, what about we do, you know, dinner for breakfast and just a very light, you know, tea or, you know, um, broth or soup or salad, in the evening and just switch that up. So your heavy meals earlier, and that can make all the difference for some women, especially during this, you know, metabolic shift. 
The other thing is really watching those carbs. Again, want to get your body into ketosis, but with an alkaline emphasis. So test don't guess. And I have clients use uh, keto pH paper and check urine pH and ketones and really make sure you're getting into ketosis with this because sometimes you can be fasting all day and still not get into ketosis. Our bodies can be that metabolically stalled. And so um, test don't guess and that can help you guide you and more um, personalize your program. Mm. So let's talk about how somebody kind of knows if like, okay, I'm in perimenopause or am I, you know, how much longer do I have? Like, are there any signs for that? Well, oh my gosh, I always say, you know, I, I've, I've been at menopausal three times. I think I'm finally menopausal, but I have to wait till this May. I mean, I was almost like 12 months without a period. And then I had a period when everyone moved back home in quarantine, all my big girls moved back home. And so I was like, oh, you know, it's like the a dormitory phenomenon. Everyone gets on the same cycle, menstrual cycle. However, that happens. I'm like, okay, no more periods. I'm good. So, 50 so you're saying fine. you're saying your daughters moved back in with you and you got a period. I I'm did all you. on their cycle. So funny. Yep. <laughs> it's true. I don't care what anyone says because me and my daughter were on the exact same cycle. Like it's just, and if I hung out with, if she was gone, for a couple of weeks and I'd hang out with someone else, I would end up on their side. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it, it's, it's amazing how that happens. That's because our energy far outreaches our physical body, right? Our energetic body, our hormones, our pheromones. It's our way of communicating outside of, of um, talking. And so uh, it's, it's so cool, but it's so, it was so true. I was like, oh my gosh. So now I've got to wait till this May. <laughs> to say if I'm menopausal, but like, that's why menopause is such a terrible word. Um, you know, puberty, puberty too, for some, for some girls, their periods start in the regular and for others, it's maybe one and then three, four months later, they have another one. And, and so there's a difference too in the perimenopause and menopause. We have to look at those things that are causing some estrogen dominance. And it is really important to clear this up. So it is not uncommon women who have been doing my keto green plan. And you'll see this in my keto green community on Facebook. They'll be like, man, I didn't have a period for two years. And I started Dr. Anna's keto green and now I'm having periods. I'm like, consider that a blessing, right? That's natural anti-aging. And plus we oftentimes what happens is we don't have enough progesterone to oppose the estrogen that's circulating in our system on our uterus. And so that can lead to, you know, uh, falsely not having a period because we don't have enough progesterone to make a period come on. And that can over time create a buildup of within the endometrium and a, um, uh, we call it endometrial hyperplasia or could lead to cancer. So having like getting your body's hormones in balance is, is critical. And this keto green lifestyle does that. So it can happen. I mean, five, 10, 15 years, you know, it can, it can span that. The biggest thing is that we do it as healthy as possible. Okay. This one says that she said, this is from DJ Ann Melody in Jacksonville, Florida. I am always constipated. What role does gut health play on our ability to manage stress and I feel like my body is always inflamed. My knees are always seeming like they're getting fluid in them. So I'm assuming that that's inflammation. But I also want to know about estrogen dominance and if my gut is the problem. Yeah, it's always a problem in constipation. You have to heal the gut. And when you're constipated, you're actually reabsorbing toxic estrogens. And that can create other problems down the line as well. And so what I say is there's often a food sensitivity. When I see clients who are constipated, there's absolutely a long term, there is a food sensitivity. We don't have to live that way. Dairy, again, a big culprit. This is coming up a lot today. So I want everyone to hear this, but dairy is a big culprit. Eliminating dairy um, can really help the gut and whatever other food sensitivities that you may have. Increasing probiotics, doing extended intermittent fasting, really trying to awaken your digestive tract again. So you're having daily 
bowel movements. It is not normal to skip a day with bowel movements. You must have daily bowel movements. That is how our body detoxifies. Now, I say this from a place of understanding as with working with my patients, as well as personally. I mean, it wouldn't be uncommon to ask my clients, say, you know, I, I'd ask, so like, hey, hey, Laura, how's, um, are you constantly? And she'd be like, no. I'm like, well, how many bowel movements do you have a day? Not a day. I maybe have one or two a week. I'm like, that's common. And we really need to understand that anything other than having a bowel movement a day is, is an issue. And that's a red flag for hormonal issues or it's creating hormonal issues as well. So for me, eliminating dairy helped reawaken my digestive tract because I used to be that same person, one, two, maybe, you know, bowel movements a week and that was it. And when you do that, you feel so much better. And after patients started reawakening their digestive tract, they'd come in and say, oh my God, I never realized how much having a bowel movement just makes me feel better better, you know, just the shift, just having regular bowel movements just is, is a tremendous, uh, tremendous health gain, right? A health win because you're, you're eliminating the toxins versus reabsorbing the toxins. And then you're not dealing with, you know, that terrible constipation, painful bowel movements, all of that. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Okay. This next one is from Jennifer and it's on, I don't, she doesn't have a city says, I love, love, love your podcast. When I heard one of your podcasts talking about DIM as a supplement to get rid of estrogen dominance, I took it for a while and I liked it, but then I just started taking some other stuff and I didn't know if I should take that and this other. I started taking the Calm Gummies, which I can get out of control with. I like them so much that I end up taking too much and have diarrhea. I did start taking your waste away digestive aid that has the HCL and digestive enzymes. And I love that if I end up eating too much, but I wanted to find out how to balance all of these supplements. Like, should I keep taking the dim? How much magnesium should I take? Like if I look at the calm gummies, how much of that should I take? I know I'm taking too much because then I get diarrhea. Jennifer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> these are great questions. Well, Jennifer, I think that everyone should take uh, these digestive enzymes. We all need those digestive enzymes. So your waste away products from is great. We want to really improve. Well, I like the one, the one that I have actually has HCL and digestive enzymes. So it has both because most of the products either has HCL or they have digestive enzymes. And so I like the fact that mine has both. And so it really does make a difference if I'm, you know, especially if I'm eating something that I definitely shouldn't be eating, it makes a world of difference. Oh yeah. And that will help eliminate constipation helps. I mean, again, healthy complexion starts with healthy digestion. So as I like to say, beauty from the inside out and, um, and especially as we get older, our natural enzymes start to decline. So pretty much, you know, most all of us need to incorporate some digestive enzymes into our um, healthy vitamin uh, protocol. And I write about vitamins in Keto Green 16 because I got a lot of questions, especially with my first book, The Hormone Fix. Like, what are the best vitamins for us to take? What, you know, um, for both men and women? And, um, and so it really does bring up some questions. If you're able to test, right? Test, don't guess. That's the key thing. Looking at nutritional panels and looking at... Um, urinary metabolites and these organic acids, these give us an idea of what we need for our body, right? What we need for our body, how are we doing? And what, you know, where could we optimize? With that said, typically all of us, like my core supplements are a multivitamin and mineral that has um, chelated minerals. So they're easy to you know, absorb and also uh, methylated that have methylated B vitamins. We want to look at a really high quality 
multivitamin and mineral. And then the second thing is mighty maca three, um, sorry, is omega threes. Omega threes are, you know, fish oils, a healthy, high quality, heavy metal tested source of fish oils is, is part of like, and we need that for beautiful hair, beautiful skin, and every cell membrane is composed of fatty acids. So we got to keep that um, optimized as we get older, I typically put people on my Mighty Maca Plus because it's 30 over 30 superfoods combined to help with inflammation, digestion, detoxification, alkalinization, and just helps. We get so many great responses with energy and decreasing appetite and eliminating hot flashes, all of those good things. So that's kind of core. I would say if there were two things I would send people home on, it would, it's the Mighty Maca and an omega-3. Well, add in the multivitamin add in digestive enzymes because you can be eating a perfect diet. And if you're not getting that HCL and digestive enzymes, you're not going to be absorbing the maximum nutrition that you could. And then a, a probiotic. So those are, those are key, key supplements. And, and what I'm doing now, adding on during this time, vitamin D, optimizing vitamin D, op adding in some carnitine for mitochondrial energy, a pure form of carnitine. And those are just uh, um, an extra vitamin C. So uh, those are some extra things that I'm doing. Oh yeah, and zinc, another 60 milligrams of zinc. And times of stress can get that stress-related hair loss and zinc helps with that. So let's go back to her question though, because she's talking about DIM for estrogen dominance. Do you feel like she should still be taking that DIM? And again, we don't know how old she is and anything from that, but in general, do you like taking DIM for estrogen dominance? I think, you know, again, looking at that and see what the issues are, you know, is it a progesterone insufficiency? So we need to boost the adrenals so that your body's naturally producing more progesterone. I love DIM. I love sulforaphanes. Um, but again, so if she, depending on her age, right? Like, depending on her age and what things she's dealing with and what does, how does it make her feel? And are we looking at estrogen metabolites to say, okay, we need to add this on. So um, good. Yeah. So those are like, you know, that's the fine tuning where testing, not guessing really helps. So um, as far as the calm gummies that she's eating too many of okay. them, um, it says, I want to find out how much magnesium you should take. Um, I actually, I take some of those calm gummies too. I have, I, I brought them um, here that I can put in here and I'm looking right here for one gummy. The nice thing is there's, it's less than one gram of sugar um, per one of these, but it does have organic cane sugar in them. So if you're trying to watch your sugars, even though each one has less than one gram, inside it looks like four gummies has three grams of sugar um so you want to be careful with that and and each one of these has 83 grams of magnesium so her question is how much magnesium should she be taking in a day 83 milligrams 83 mgs yeah 83 milligrams in one gummy I mean, typically you can take 250 milligrams of magnesium a day. Is that a magnesium citrate or a magnesium carbonate? What kind of magnesium is that? Um, it says magnesium citrate. So that's why the diarrhea. So, you know, when you get up in, in that magnesium citrate, um, you know, versus a magnesium glycinate, you're more likely to have diarrhea. So I think like, um, you know, probably definitely not more than eight a day. Definitely not more than eight a day with that. Um, and was it four? Give how well, many? Each one is on eight. Here it says it says for on there it says that four gummies are for ages thirteen and above. So, um, and four gummies is three hundred and thirty milligrams. Yeah. So you probably really if they're doing over three hundred. 130 of magnesium citrate. Certainly when you get over 500 milligrams of magnesium citrate, you can have some diarrhea Add in the sugar on top of that. Um, and I think, you know, listen to your body, listen to your body on that, but certainly yeah, start not. testing it and seeing, okay, if I take two, am I still having diarrhea? Yeah. Okay. This next one is from unknown. 
I want to ask about hormones. I've heard from different podcasts. Some people say just to take a saliva test. Then the next guy says, take a blood test, blood test. One guy said, don't take a blood test, that that's pointless. I feel like I don't know who to believe. I've also taken a bunch of tests and I feel like I'm no better than I was before. One guy says you should only take it on this day. One guy says you should only take it on the 21st day. This is getting very confusing and I feel like I'm spending a lot of money on all these different tests and I'm no better than I was before. I saw a friend of mine that had literally lost 20 pounds. She was really muscular. And the thing that she said that she did different is taking testosterone. Thoughts? Oh my gosh. Okay. There's so many thoughts around this. And um, I always tell my clients that when you come to my practice, we're going to test all your body fluids at one time or another. Urine hormones, salivary hormones, blood hormones, they all tell us a little different picture. And I've always been split, you know, split testing, do them all at one time. What all does it show you? And, um, and it can, you know, you can have some inconsistency. So here it comes down to treat the patient, not the labs, work with a really good physician. And we really want to optimize, we do want to optimize our hormones from the inside out through, you know, these therapeutic lifestyle changes. When we're stressed, it doesn't matter how much testosterone or progesterone or whatever else we're doing, that's going to affect us adversely, right? So we have to really control our stress first and foremost. I am a big believer in using bioidentical progesterone and even pregnenolone, especially in the perimenopause, menopause to help with that good night's sleep, that brain fog, the, you know, helping with gynecologic issues and, um, you know, and, and well put into postmenopause, a little bit of bioidentical progesterone can really help. And then using DHEA, of course, because it created Jolva and has DHEA in it for the vulva. And that can really be beneficial. And we get into um, using testosterone and we really need to fine tune that. We can do too much very easily and physiology affects our behavior. So too much testosterone can lead to novelty seeking behaviors in both men and women. So we really want to, um, to be very conscious that physiology affects behavior, but and understand where that testosterone is converting because testosterone will convert to estrogen. So overall, I feel comfortable with, you know, low levels of androgen physiologic doses, but each individual is different. You need to work with a physician. I always say, check with your compounding pharmacist who is doing hormones well. I mean, we don't want, you know, like we don't want to be super physiologic. We don't want to have these really high levels of testosterone and then we're angry and irritable and our relationships are falling apart. I mean, that's not healthy either. And I've certainly seen that in my medical practice and working with clients from Uh, you know, consulting with clients from around the country. So we want to optimize our hormones. So I am a big fan of bioidentical hormones in physiologic doses while keeping our detox pathways open, right? While getting, you know, keto green, while doing a meditative and and, and physical active practice. Um, These are all part of a healthy, you know, healthy life. And that's what we want. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about something that can lead to chronic disease. Yes, it's sugar. Over 70% of Americans are eating more sugar than they need to, and I was one of them. And I kept saying, you know, this is my last time. I'm going to cut back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I didn't. I saw all the negative health effects. It was weakening my immune system, and I just couldn't say no. And that's until I discovered some really practical steps to just eliminating sugar from my life for good, and I want to teach you that as well. So everything I've learned to break my sugar addiction in my 30-day Kick Sugar Challenge, you're going to get exclusive access to a private Facebook group. You're going to have four weekly calls. You're going to get an accountability partner. I'm going to be personally walking you through these next 30 days. The most important thing you're going to learn though in these 30 days is the mindset you need to kick the sugar 
to take your intermittent fasting to the next level. So just go to ChantelRayWay.com slash KickSugar to learn more. The best part is it's only $30 right now. That's a dollar a day investing in you for 30 days. It officially doesn't start until January 4th, but if you join now, you're gonna get pre-access to the group and we're gonna give you practical tips to not overindulge through the holidays. On December 15th, the price is gonna go up. So click the link in the description and you'll get to go to chantelrayway.com slash kick sugar and you can join the group for just $30. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing on the days, from what I understand, is that if you're checking your progesterone levels, that progesterone can be kind of deliberately measured on day 21 in the middle of the second half, like your luteal phase, to see if ovulation has occurred. Is that right? Yeah. And also, you know, and I, I write about this on my site too, when to test um, day 19 to 21 for peak progesterone levels. And you can look at testosterone during that time, estrogen during that time, you know, any other hormone during that time as well. You want to look at baseline hormone, day two the to three of your half. cycle, right. day two to three, mm-hmm. while you're bleeding, day two to three of your cycle. And that's, you know, FSH, LH, and estradiol. And then we can, we can look at, we can look at that there. We're not going to see progesterone or testosterone. And so if you're cycling, we use that rhythm. If you're periods are irregular. We try to get peak hormones like day 19 to 21 after your last, you know, from your first day of bleeding. And if you're in the postmenopause, just like maybe the, when you test, retest at the same time, the same conditions in the same environment, for example, retest at 10 AM after taking your, you know, six hours after taking hormones, if you're on them and before exercise, if you are taking, and the next time you get it tested, the same situation, same, you know, time of the month, same time of the day, and same conditions regarding supplementation or any medications you're on. Mm-hmm. That helps us get a better idea of what's happening over time. And that's why some of the studies like 24-hour urinary hormones is helpful or like, um, you know, throughout the day measuring for urinary hormone levels or salivary hormone levels that takes into consideration what's happening throughout a normal day. But, you know, again, one thing that people don't realize, like after a strenuous exercise routine, your testosterone is going to be up, your DHA is going to be up, and that can falsely, you know, guide management. And so one of the things, another thing that I tell clients, it, you know, again, it comes to that, treat the patient, not the labs. Okay, last question. This question is from Nancy in Montreal. I get massive headaches right before my period starts and right before it's about to end. I know you won't believe this, but I've never taken Tylenol or Advil in my whole life. I only use natural methods. Sometimes I use progesterone cream, but is there any other natural methods that I can use that when I get a headache, I do not have to use Tylenol or Advil? I will say this, this is really awesome to hear. And I barely ever, 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 like if I can't say that I've never taken Tylenol or Advil, but I can say this, I can count on one hand how much I take it in the last two years. So this is really exciting that uh, you know, she's saying this, but, um, go ahead. I just want to add I that. Love that too, because we shouldn't need to, right. These are anti-inflammatory. So how do we remove inflammation from our system? Now, menstrual migraines or menstrual headaches are a little bit different. That's from that dip in hormones. You really want to optimize your hormones by optimizing your adrenals. Here's where Mighty Maca Plus can come in. Um, other adrenal adaptogens can come in to help. Um, with that, with supporting your body's natural progesterone, natural hormone production and detoxification. Number two, look for food sensitivities that could be affecting you. And number three, magnesium and biotin. Those are two supplements that can really help with reducing those menstrual migraines. And I typically use a magnesium l supplement or a magnesium glycinate. So what's going on? Let, let's just get to the root of the problem for her. What is happening that the headache is coming on. Why are why is the headache coming right before and right after? What's actually happening? 
there that exactly. is causing it. Premenstrual migraines are due to that dip in progesterone. So and having that progesterone cream would help. Would help, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then the migraine before her period starts can also be from low estrogen. So, you know, and that's where looking at other, making sure that we're optimizing also vitamin D because in order for our hormones to work well, we have to have healthy levels of vitamin D at the receptors, also iodine for hormonal receptors. And then again, avoiding food sensitivities and looking at that and seeing, could there be any other culprits there? Awesome. Well, and that's why sometimes we'll use a estrogen patch when people have hormonal migraines. We'll slap on an estrogen patch during those fat that week just to kind of elevate the baseline and that can help too. Awesome. Well, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. And if you have any promotions going on right now. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, um, easy to find at dranna.com. So D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And I encourage everyone to check out my show, the girlfriend doctor show. It's on my homepage and you'll see a tab for the show. It's also on YouTube and we're posting a lot at the girlfriend doctor on Instagram. So definitely connect with me in social and be sure to join my keto green community. We always have something going on in our store. We have free trials of Jolva, free trials of Mighty Maca. So if you haven't, if you haven't tried those, I encourage you to try them. I know that they are just life-changing for so many individuals. So well, I do want you to talk you. about your your Jolva cream. So just talk about that real quick before we end. Yeah, definitely. I have some here. So um, Jolva is my anti-aging cream for the vulva. It has DHEA. It has plant stem cells from the Alpine Rose. It has some coconut oil, shea butter, and emo oil to help with absorption and really keep the tissue healthy. I say clitoris to anus is the most important real estate of our body. And as we get older, the changes, just like menopause is not mandatory, these hormonal changes really affect our pelvic floor. And that creates a lot of suffering for us in our old age. And this is in all of us, as we get older, the vaginal thin out. And um, what happens is there's dryness, loss of pleasure, decreased orgasm. But the number one reason that caregivers put their loved one into nursing home is incontinence. So those accidental bladder leaking, and I get it, I've had four big babies. This was part of my own natural way to help keep those muscles strong between Jolva and pelvic floor exercises. We see a huge improvement, if not complete resolution and so, you know, completely, um, resol- complete resolution and symptoms. So, yeah, so it's been this beautiful, we have thousands of testimonials on our website and just stories. And it is, um, you know, I designed it from my own journey and working with patients and I designed it to work. It really does work beautifully and it's all natural, no parabens, no synthetic, no preservatives. And, um, yeah, it works really good. Plus I give hundred percent money back guarantee. So I've want you to try it. And this is a two month, a little bit goes a long way. You're not having to put a lot of cream on and messy. You don't have to insert it, you know, and uh, it works just from topical application and it smells good. It's, you know, it's nice. Awesome. Well, thank care. you so much. It's always fun talking to you. Thank you, Chantel. Thanks for having me. And you guys stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sempronto Media Production.